Over the past year, I've bought about 60 fruit trees and I thought I'd share with you some of the things I've learned along the way. So these are gonna be my six tips on how to get the best fruit trees so you don't waste your time or your money. If you're anything like me, when you go out shopping, looking to buy a tree, you're looking to find a bargain. Uh, there's a temptation when doing that to just get the biggest tree that you can for your money, but bigger doesn't necessarily mean better. Um, one big tall tree with a tall trunk isn't necessarily going to be as good as something like this, where you have one trunk that then splits out into, in this case it's got five uh, branches, just because it provides a good framework to hold a lot of fruit on. You don't have to go around the garden centre with a tape measure, you don't have to have five, um, but that's a good number to aim for, sort of three, four, five that are ideally evenly spaced out around the trunk is going to give you the best framework. So the second thing to look out for is rootstock. So pretty much all trees that you buy are grafted, i.e. an older tree is stuck onto the rootstock of a younger tree. Uh, that means that you'll get fruit earlier than if you just planted a seed in the ground. That's one advantage, but the other advantage is the rootstock will govern the size of the tree. So you need to think about how big your space is. A lot of trees, if they're not grafted, will grow huge. Uh, the problem with that is you won't be able to get any of the fruit or very little of the fruit. An example is that loquat tree behind me. I can probably reach, I don't know, 5% of the tree with a ladder. The rest of it, there's no way I'm going to climb up there. That's the first problem. The other problem with that is that if the tree needs something, so like pruning becomes more difficult or if it needs more nutrition, so you need to mulch it or you need to um, put more nutrition into the ground, it's really difficult to do with a tree of that size. In this case, I don't care. I quite like having the tree there just because it's nice. Uh, but if, you're, if your main focus is to get fruit, then you want a tree that you can easily reach and isn't going to get too out of shape. And the rootstock is what's going to govern that. I like to buy trees that are on an M9 rootstock. The reason being is they grow to a height where I could probably just about reach the top of the tree. Um, maybe I might need a ladder, but that's cool. That's the kind of size that I want to go for. So M9 works for me. Um, if you've got a bigger place and you want to, maybe you want to block out the neighbours or something like that, you might want a bigger rootstock. And you can also go smaller. I mean, they make rootstock trees that don't come much beyond this kind of height. So that's the next thing. Look out for the rootstock and the size that the tree will eventually become. So the reason I'm sitting here next to my little avocado tree is my next point is about pollinators. Avocados are one of those trees that you need to have a pollinator. So there is an A-type avocado and a B-type avocado, and you need one of each in order to get fruit. Uh, and there are lots of other trees that are similar. So things like plums, pears, some apples, nectarines. These are trees that need a pollinator in order for them to fruit. That doesn't mean that every single variety does. Some varieties are self-fertile, so you can just have one tree and they will give you fruit. Um, but if you're not sure, it's best to ask. And it's another reason why I think going to a nursery is a good idea. I think if you just happen to want one tree in your garden and you've only got space for one and you go into a, the big box store and say, hey, I'm after a self-fertile tree of some description, I'm not sure that they'll be able to point you in the right direction where people who work at nurseries just tend to be a bit better informed and they're a bit more into it. And I think they're just good places. And if people spend their money in these places, then, then they're more likely to survive and uh, we won't all be living just with the big box stores. You might think that if you just go to the local garden centre that anything they sell there will grow really well in your particular climate. Unfortunately, that's just not the case. One, garden centres sell to a really large area and two, they'll just sell anything that you're willing to buy. You know, for example, I could buy a cherry tree from the local garden centre, it might grow well here. We don't really get frost though, and so we would probably never get cherries. Um, but there are many varieties with each tree and one of those varieties is very likely to suit your climate and your own little microclimate in your garden. So it's worth really looking into. Uh, an example is 
uh, that nectarine tree there. So nectarines typically grow in warm, dry places, you know, obviously southern Europe and California and places like that. Here we get quite a damp, wet spring. It's very humid here. The peach trees don't really like it and you can get brown rot. So because we get sort of hot summers and we also get quite hot and dry autumns, uh, it makes a lot of sense for me to get something that flowers really late and produces fruit really late in the season and I'm much more likely to get success like that. Um, that's the kind of detail that, again, it's something that's really useful to get from someone at the nursery. Either do your research online or ask someone at the nursery and just say, this is where I live. And you know, if they know your own area, they'll know your own climate and they'll be much better at getting something that really is gonna work for your, for your garden in even the exact spot in your garden. So point five is about timing. So when's the best time to plant a tree? If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, it's really now, uh, autumn's probably the best time, late autumn, when the tree's dormant, or you can do it in winter, depending on how severe your, your winters are. Um, here I plant them in winter, just because we get a lot of rain then, so it's really easy for the tree to kind of settle in. Um, you want the tree to be dormant, you don't want leaves on the trees, and that's what's kind of weird. You quite often see people walking around garden centers in the spring, I guess because people are getting out in the garden more and they think, oh, I'll buy trees. Um, it's really not a good idea. The tree is trying to grow at this time, so it's trying to get um, the roots out and it's trying to put leaves out. And as it goes into the ground, it's going to get transplants shock, it's going to struggle, and then you're going into to summer. So you'll spend all summer chucking buckets of water on it to keep it alive. So it's a lot easier just to do it um, at late autumn or in the winter. Point number six is about soil type. And the reason I'm sitting here is because this is one of my failures. We have a lot of uh, clay soil here. Uh, most trees do not like having their roots all sort of wet in clay soil, but a lot of them can cope with it. This is a tamarillo and it's particularly susceptible to root rot. I didn't know that when I planted it, I put it here and it's spring now, there's no new leaves on it, it's dead. Um, so that's my fault. But if I'd have looked into it a bit more, I could have done something about it, like I could have, you know, planted it not so deep. I could have also put some sand in there to help with drainage, put some comfrey down. There's lots I could have done, but it's worth knowing your soil type. Um, and there are many trees that can cope with different kinds of soil types. So it's another thing that's worth knowing and then discussing with whoever's selling you the tree. This tree I didn't buy, it was actually on the property when we bought it and it's a bit of a mess really. It's kind of got five different trunks and it's sprawling all over the place. But you know, I'm just gradually pruning it back into some sort of decent shape. So I'd say, you know, don't worry about it. Still go out and enjoy buying a tree. And if you buy something that's not perfect, you can always prune it back into shape. And if you want to know more about that, I've done a video about pruning that I will link to in the notes. Thanks so much for watching and hopefully I will see you next week.